Welcome to Electron Online. This next example on the distributed load on a beam will give us a little bit more insight about this particular type of problem. What we have here is we have two load segments. We have one that starts at 120 newtons per meter and goes down to zero. We have one that starts at 40 newtons per meter, goes down to zero at the exact same spot, a distance x away from the left side of the beam. The beam is 12 meters long and they're asking us to find the value for x, where should we put the zero point, to the left, to the right, where it is, in such a way that the force supported by A equals the force supported by B. In other words, that the reactionary force at both ends of the beam are equal to each other so that, so that they carry half the load. The key to understanding this is, for that to be true, the centroid of the load distribution must be exactly at the halfway point of the beam. In other words, the x-coordinate of the centroid must be equal to 6 meters, the beam being 12 meters. We're now going to solve the problem in the exact same way as before using this table, but we already know that the x-coordinate of the centroid is at 6 meters, and knowing that will help us find what x is equal to. So we'll do this the exact same way, except with numbers we'll have the, value, the variable x everywhere in these boxes. So first of all, we find the force caused by the, the total force caused by the first load segment. This is segment number one. This is segment number two. So F sub one is equal to, since it's a triangular shape, one half times the base. The base would be distance of x. And the height would be 120, which means it is equal to 60x. That is the total force caused by the first load segment, 60x. The force caused by the second load segment over here, we'll do it the exact same way. F sub 2 is equal to, since a triangular section, 1 half times the base. In this case, the base would be 12 meters minus x. Remains that. So that's 12 minus x times the height. It's 40. So this is equal to 20 times 12 minus x which is equal to 240 minus 20x, and that goes in here, 240 minus 20x. Now we need to find the centroids of each of those two segments. For the first one, it's easy. It's a triangular segment. We know it's one-third the distance from here to there. One-third x goes in here. Here it's a little trickier. We'll have to be careful. So x sub 2 is equal to, it'll be definitely x plus two-thirds the distance from there to there. So it will be x plus two-thirds the distance from there to there, which is 12 minus x. 12 minus x, that gives us x plus eight minus two-thirds x, which is equal to one-third x plus eight. And that goes in here, one-third x plus eight. All right, now we're ready to find the total moment. That can be found by multiplying this times this and adding that when we multiply this times this. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 third x times 60x is 20x squared plus, multiply these two together, we'll just leave them as a multiplication, 240 minus 20x multiplied times 1 third x plus 8. That's the total moment. Now we need to find the total force, which is adding this plus this, 60x minus 20x is 40x plus 240. And finally, we'll find the x-coordinate of the centroid by taking the total moment and dividing by the total force to give us 6. Now that clue will allow us to solve for the variable x. We'll simply have to divide this by this, set equal to 6, and now solve for x. The total moment divided by the total force equals to the x-coordinate of the centroid. In this case, that would be 20x squared plus 240 minus 20x times 1 third x plus 8. The whole thing divided by 40x plus 240, and that equals 6. To simplify things just a little bit, we realize we can factor out a 20 here, we can factor out a 20 there, we can factor out a 20 here, which makes this look like 20 times x squared plus 20 removed from that gives us 12 minus x 
times one third x plus eight. And the whole thing divided by 20 times two x plus 12. And we set that equal to six. And notice of course that the two 20s cancel out. Now going ahead and combining this, multiplying this out, combining this and multiplying this to the right side, see what we get. x squared, 12 times this gives us plus 4x. 12 times this gives us plus 96. Plus, oh, no, that would be minus. Minus x times this is a minus 1 third x squared. This times this gives us a minus 8x. And that equals 6 times that is 12x. 6 times this is plus 72. All right, it definitely is a quadratic equation now. We simply need to simplify it. Combining these two terms, we get 2 thirds x squared plus 4x minus 8, 8x is a minus 4x plus 96 equals 12x plus 72. Next, it looks like we could divide both sides by 2, simplify things a little bit more. We get 1 third x squared minus 2x plus 48 equals 6x plus half of 72, 36. Finally, I want to get rid of the 1 third x squared, multiply everything by 3. We get x squared minus 6x plus 144 equals 18x plus 3 times this, that would be 108. And now combining everything over to one side, we end up with x squared minus 6 minus 18, that would be minus 24x. And 144 minus 108, that looks like plus 36, equals 0. Now all we have to do is solve this quadratic equation. Since I'm out of room on that side, let me move over to this side. So we had x squared minus 24x plus 36 equals 0. And in case we forgot what we're trying to do, we're trying to find the point where this should go to 0 for both distrib distributed load segments x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2a. For that we need a calculator. We have 4 times 36, put a minus sign in front of that, plus 24 squared, take the square root of that, so let me write down the intermediate result. We get x is equal to 24 plus or minus 20.78 divided by 2. The minus is most likely the correct answer because if I add the two together and divide by 2, I get something way bigger than 12 meters, which is impossible. So I'm going to subtract 20.78 from that. So put a minus plus 24 divided by 2 equals, and we get x equals 1.608 meters. What that means is that the distributed load should be such that this drops off from 120, 120 newtons per meter to zero after x equals 1.608 meters and then it starts increasing up to 40 newtons per meter when it reaches the other end of the beam. If that's the case, then the load will be such that the x coordinate of the centroid will be right in the middle of the beam and both A and B will support the exact same load. And that's how we solve a problem like this.